Hey everybody, Norm over here, and this character came in here with this hat and That's this right. guitar, and uh, I think I recognize him from this right here. Yeah, I'm that character. Congratulations, yeah. Joe, for the cover of Vintage Guitar Magazine, our favorite magazine of all magazines. Yeah, thank you. And uh, you did it again. And and well, and, and, and thank you for informing me of that because um, I, I did an interview with them about a month ago, and I didn't know what it was for. And then you said congratulations on the cover. I was like. Oh wow, and they actually used a vintage guitar this time, which was cool. And that's um, my 58 Flying V, the other one. With this the, is the trash bag. That's the trash bag one, yeah. So, and not the one I got from you, which has a black pickguard. But uh, yeah, it's, it's, it's it, it, a decent shot of me, you know, proving a broken watch is right twice a day. And, you, you know, <laughs> it's, it's fine. So, and Joe came in, of course, bearing something again to torture us with one of the rarest Les Paul Customs on the planet. And uh, tell us a little bit about this guy. Yeah, this is a twist on, on uh, something you've seen a, a bunch. This is a 1959 two-pickup Les Paul Custom. And for as many black beauties as you've seen over the years. Very rare with two humbuckers. Very rare that they came with two humbuckers. And um, the guitar came out of Pennsylvania. And um, to my knowledge, it was ordered with the Grover Imperials. Because um, a couple of things is like when you look at something like this, does all the hardware match up? And you know, the, yeah. the patina on the Bigsby and the patina on the tuners is, is the same as it does in the, you know, the pickups. No footprint of anything else, everything matches Yeah, up, and you know. you know, so I mean, to me, it's like, it's a very honest old guitar. It's actually quite good, you know? Um, I was never a fan of ebony fingerboards, and, but this one's actually really good. Yeah, it does. It does. It, it does a really nice job, and um, I think I'm going to play this one. And those are PAFs, obviously. These are, these are PAFs. This one squeals at high volumes. I found that out the hard way at the baked potato the other day. Um, just kind of strung it up and plugged it in and went for a solo and it, it started to squeal a little bit which they tend to do especially 58 ones 59s you know whatever did you incorporate it into the tune yeah it was meant to be it was, plus it was yeah. a jazz gig so if you just keep repeating it it is meant to be if you repeat the mistake twice it's actual music oh, yeah. you know it doesn't <laughs> it, 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 it count you yeah. can even go to an indian scale or something you just, like that you, you, you know? just stick the landing you know you know, I mean, you just stick the landing and all that, but um, but yeah, it's it's a it's a cool guitar, and you know, about as rare as a flying V, or maybe even rare. I mean, there's yeah, made very few two pickups. Made, made very few. Of these. I was telling Joe I had one years ago, and it was a beautiful, clean guitar. Didn't have a Bigsby or anything, but it had one of those um, mutes on the, you know, that was right behind the nut. It was ordered that way, I guess, or that was probably yeah. an early add-on, but it would hold the strings down and kind of mute the strings. Very rarely do I see that on like a Les Paul or something. Yeah, I mean, you know, you, if you, you, can, you can buy reissue catalogs now. You can just go to, you know, I think J.K. Luthery or whatever, and you could buy catalogs. And I have a pretty decent collection of old catalogs. And one of the most interesting catalogs you could, you could, you could find is the Gibson Accessories catalog. And they would sell you the Vibramute or the Vibramate, which, which tacked onto your arch top and you could actually make like a, you know, a fake Bigsby off of it. They sold so many aftermarket parts through Gibson and you could basically order anything you wanted if you knew the dealer and was, sure. you know, were willing to wait. And, you know, a lot of these guitars, especially the, the kind of, you've seen so many of them with, with, with mandolin headstocks on arch oh, tops. Yeah. I mean, like it, it, anything was possible. You just, if you were willing to wait and willing to pay up a little bit. And, and we would see a lot, they did something with guitars with names on them and stuff where they did the uh, truss rod covers yeah. with those metal etched with people's names and stuff like that. Yes. That was one of the things they offered back in the day. Yeah, and then you, you know, you, they would sell you the blanks. And I um, actually at home I have a set of four that are blank and it came in a box. And it was up to you, take it to a local engraver and they would engrave your name or you could put anything you want on it. And, cool. and, and you know, it was just a way of personalizing guitars. And you know, I like the folk art. I like when they, they have a signed painter paint their name on the pick guard. I mean, I think that's yeah. cool. Some people take the, 
you know, immediately buy the guitar and take it off. To me, that's like the history. You're never going to remove that from anything, so. I like the look of this yellow binding too, that kind of against the black looks really I, cool. You know? I wouldn't want to build it. Yeah. And that's a, it's a lot of work, the, the three bindings. And, and this, you know, a lot of people don't realize this was an extra $100. Um, more than a standard. More than a standard. So, in, you know, so for $375 in 1959, that was a lot of money for, for a solid body electric guitar, you know. So. And this is probably the rarest variation with the two PAFs. Yeah, with the, you know, the two PAFs and, and it's, it's shocking they didn't, they really didn't start building two pickup customs until 68, you know. And, you know, you would think it would be just a no-brainer, but, you know, there's a picture, of, I think less, there's a picture of less with one. Um, I, I found a picture with Johnny Winter with one with a Bigsby, and um, uh, Stephen Stills had what appeared to be a late 50s two pickup custom with a Bigsby. So they're out there. Um, as far as total numbers, I have no idea. You, you'd yeah. be guessing at 20 or 30, maybe, maybe 50. Very low production. Pre Beatles, there just wasn't a lot of stuff, you know. And if they had orders, they would fulfill them, and if not, they wouldn't yeah. make them. So it just it just kind of was, you know. Well, this was the hallelujah package on this guitar. Here. Oh yeah, well, or the, the lucky accident, you know. It's worth more now than a, you know. You think, you know, you pay more for a guitar, you should get the third pickup for free. But in this <laughs> in this in this case, it, it's good. It's better when it doesn't have one. So. Absolutely. Well, Joe, as always, you always come in and dumbfound us with some really cool stuff. And by the way, uh, we've been holding back on this, but I just would like to talk about this a sec. We've got the All Guitar Network that's coming. Joe's one of the owners, and Joe is going to have a show, uh, which is going to be lessons. Yeah, well, it's, it's going to be like, like a little bit of uh, guitar history, some lessons. Um, you know, it, it's like... You know, we we love all this stuff. We collect all this stuff. We're enthusiasts, hobbyists, no matter what. And but to to actually show what the applications are, you know, it's like, you know, why is a gold top Les Paul associated with Freddie King, or why is a you know a PAF guitar associated with either Eric Clapton, or it's like, and and what do you do with them once you once you have one in your hands? You know, like okay, what? How do you drive it? You know, what's the right amp? What's the right? So we're gonna put together like a series of like like short stories and some lessons and you know yeah, things that'll get be more informative than than just you know going here's here's a guitar you know? well what he's going to do also is kind of take the guitar try to play the appropriate song right. and then maybe slow it down a little bit and show you guys how you do right. it and why that guitar was that sound and all that and it's going to be like one guitar and a lesson yeah, and an amp, you know, in, in an amp, you know, it's like, it's like, it's like, how do you, you pair the guitar with the amp and the and the sound, and that's how, you know, because remember, before there was a collectible collectible guitar market, these were just tools, you know, right. it's like I needed a sound, I needed a guitar with more more, you know, mid range, so they would pick up a Les Paul. It just happened to be a Sunburst Les Paul, you know, oh, or Mike right. Bloomfield started playing one, and everybody wanted them, and the rest is history. That was so it. you know, it's it, and it wasn't. It was just because they were there, you know. Now they're this mystique and, about and them. And there's going to be some other stuff too, like um, you know, using vibrato, like Slim Harpo mm -hmm. or um, uh, Clarence Carter on Thread the Needle, or you know, different things like that. Um, leading a small combo, how you would play with a small combo as opposed to a big combo. Right. Um, what some other yeah other I mean stuff. The, the, you know a lot of people like they they want the biggest guitar sound they can get and that's full range but if you look at a 31 band EQ it goes from about you know 63 Hertz or if, if it's a professional one 20 Hertz or whatever all the way up to frequencies birds communicate in the problem is is if you're playing in a big band if you try to get a as full range of sound as you can you're gonna cut into the kick drum, the snare, and the organ, and and any of these other mid-range instruments, you know. So if you solo a lot of your favorite guitar sounds that were like monstrous in your mind, you find that they were designed to fit into the track, Slot. and they're not as big as you think they are. Right. You know, I mean, one of the most interesting things is, is is the free records for me. When you when you look listen to free records, it's a combination of Andy Frazier and Paul Kossoff making those power chords because you know Andy Frazier was playing an octave below with an SG bass through the same Marshall amps that Paul. Kossoff, you know, and it, it was everything was distorted. 
Right. But it sounded like this gigantic one guitar orchestra, but it was actually the bass and the guitar. So it, yeah, it, there's a lot of stuff to arranging, it, it, yeah. arranging, and how things sit and how to do it. You know, power trio versus an eight piece band or or a four piece. You know, I mean, there's a lot of things that go into making music that not uh, they're not necessarily addressed when you watch like a typical online video like oh well, here's how i get the biggest guitar sound i possibly can well how do you apply that to real world applications like like uh, okay now you're in a band and how do you deal with everybody looking at you going are you kidding me turn that crap down you know <laughs> and then you have to make nice with your people unless <laughs> unless unless you just play the tracks which i know some people do that as well so and there's a lot there's a lot to learn there's a lot, you, a lot to know when you were young when you were listening to a lot of these tracks and stuff and emulating these people you wanted to figure out how they did certain things oh yeah you know i mean you know i i learned chuck berry you know b flat <laughs> But you know, you know, years later, I, I thought that's that sounds more right to me. I mean, little things like that. I mean, playing the same note. But you can, if you listen closely enough, you hear Chuck playing the riff on these two verses. And sometimes he would vary it, but you know, on those classic recordings, you know, you listen closely, you're like, oh, okay, he's playing more on a wound string, and that's why it sounds a certain way. You just get into, you go down the vibrato, these vibrato, yeah, he's playing behind the beat, playing in front of the beat, you know, I mean, and you get into these, the 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 beauty, the beauty of that music is is n nobody sat down and overthought it. They just reacted and they played it how they played it. Now, if you're trying to recreate those sounds. It becomes it becomes really difficult because you're like you're trying to recreate something that was done so nonchalantly and just from pure heart and sometimes if, in, in 99 percent feel vis-a-vis -vis skill you know you know a lot of everybody trying to figure out what John Lee Hooker's doing he he knew how to play in one key you know when I sat in with him when I was 14 he knew how to play in one key and then the boogie was in A but he'd play E over A you know. And, but and the chord change came whenever he felt like whenever it. Right? The vo whenever the, the, the vocal went there, and you had to be on your toes. So well, it, not the chord change, but even just the feel change. Yeah, it would be like sometimes you get nine bars in E, and then you go to A for nine bars, and then back to E, and that would be the song, you know. And he would just he would just react to it. So there's a lot going on in, in a lot of this kind of music that that n not necessarily lines up with a grid, and not necessarily lines up with common belief, you know, and, 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 it's, and it's one of those things that, that, you know, a lot of people who spend their entire lives listening to guitar music, you end up picking up little bits over the years. So. Well, a nice lesson with you is gonna save a lot of people time because, you know, all the time you had to spend going through all these other records and trying to find a video and figuring all oh, this yeah. stuff out, you can make it a shortcut for a lot of people. And it'll be a great winder for people who think I'm doing it wrong, which is awesome. <laughs> it's also part of the fun. Well, we'll take the criticism. Exactly, but take, take the good with the bad. It is I'm good. so happy to have you involved well, you. with the All Guitar Network. It's going to be something that I think is going to be so killer. We all believe in it, and uh, we'll let you guys know when it's fully launched. And uh, you know, we hope you all become a member and be part of it because it's going to be a club everybody who's into guitars is want to be going to want to be a part of. Yeah, it's going to be fun, and and, and it's a one-stop shop for for anybody who's into this you know, kind of guitar playing, music, um, vintage guitars, new guitars. I mean, it, it covers it all. It's, it's, a, it's a really clever idea and, and something, you know, you know, that I think is lacking in the marketplace a, a little bit in the sense that there's no place where you just go and it's like you can you can get lost for day after day after day in, in, in this kind of stuff because it, it, it is a lot of fun and, and, it, and it prevents you from going down those those YouTube like rabbit holes and then you know I tried I had to learn a song the other day and and uh, for for a record I did with my keyboard player <laughs> and I and I and I went and I looked it up and I said I, let me learn it and then there's some dude teaching it and I'm like that's wrong it just sounds wrong first of all it's not even the right key and and I'm like that's just, it, did, it didn't make any sense so I finally I, I just went up to the artist who did the song and I and I and I looked at it and I just watched his hands and I go okay that's how you do it. So there's a, there's a lot of information out there, it, not necessarily in the right way, you know. So, and there's some good stuff and there's some bad stuff. It, 
It's, well, we hope we can there's a make sea it a shortcut. Exactly, and that's the whole point. So, thanks, well, Norm. Thanks thank for you, having Joe, us again. And congratulations! Great magazine, great cover, and uh, you know, he's got so much of this stuff happening. He doesn't even realize he's on the cover of Vintage Guitar Magazine. I know. What a great it's, honor. A, it's, a, it's a it's a big honor for me. It's not lost on me. I just I I didn't know they were going to put me on the cover. It's really nice. Well, I'm glad I broke the news to you. Thanks. <laughs> 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 all right, brother. The great Joe Bonamassa stopping by. Great guitars. All Guitar Network. you got to be watching out for that. That's going to be the coolest thing. A lot of fun for all you guitar players and all you guitar freaks. Thanks a lot.